Good morning. This is Mari Juliet with the Evolution of Confidence podcast. I'm so happy that you're here because today we are talking about productivity hacks. I am going to share with you all of the tips and tricks that I've learned along the years um, that have helped me so much with staying on track, staying motivated, and keeping my vision at the forefront of my mind. So let's get right into it and start with my 10 productivity hacks. First things first, let's talk about the definition of productivity, which is the state or quality of producing something which is measured in terms of the rate of output per unit of input. So when we talk about productivity, we're not just talking about doing busy work. We're not just talking about, you know, getting things off of your list that don't align with what you're actually trying to achieve. So getting really specific with your goals and specific with why they're your goals, with why they're important to you is extremely important because there's so much content now um, about productivity or manifestation. And what's really important is to remember that success and, you know, achievement is going to look completely different for every single person listening to this episode. So take what resonates with you uh, with this episode. And I want you to take tangible tips with you that you can use day to day, uh, but just keep in mind to keep it tailored to you because that's the only way that it's going to be sustainable for the long term. So the first productivity hack that I want to share with you is one that I learned from a professor at FAU. I took a diplomacy program, which was basically model United Nations. Uh, We competed uh, with other schools from all over the country, and he was truly the best professor I ever had. And he always said, a body in motion stays in motion. He would put a lot of work on us, a ton, a ton of paperwork, reading, writing, all of the above. And he would always say, a body in motion stays in motion. The more that you have on your plate sometimes, the better and more productive you will be. So once I kind of learned that and it resonated with me, I really have taken that with me since then. Um, And it helps you to remember that Yes, there are some people that are naturally a bit more, I guess, motivated than others. But at the end of the day, anyone can get into a rut. Anybody can get into the situation where you're not in motion, where maybe you were, and then something happens, and then you're sitting on the couch watching Netflix for days and days and days on end. It has happened to me. It's happened to a lot of people that are, you know, quote unquote, motivated or successful or seem very productive. But that does not mean that those people do not have times where they are not in motion, where they do fall into those ruts. And at the end of this list, I am going to talk about how to get out of a rut because I have experience in that. And I want to share with you the tips that I use when I feel like I'm maybe not at my 100%. Um, but going back to body motion stays in motion, of course, you don't want to work yourself until you're burnt out. You know, that's, that's the biggest thing is you don't want to overdo it, but you do want to be realistic with the fact that if you're setting these really high goals for yourself, which I want you to do, I always recommend to send, to set much higher goals for yourself than you believe that you can achieve, write them down consistently. There's never a time where I don't have a notebook next to me somewhere. I have probably like five notebooks in my car right now strewn about, but it's really important to me because if I'm not consistently clear with my goals, because they do change, just because you make a New Year's resolution on January 1st doesn't mean that by May your your ideas have changed and maybe your priorities have changed. Because again, it's going to be different for every single person. Making a million dollars a year is not going to be everybody's goal. Uh, Spending time with your kids could be your goal. Uh, Working out more and feeling more confident in your body could be your goal. Uh, You know, just achieving goals in general could be your goal. Because the feeling and the confidence that you get from writing things down and then looking back and saying, oh, I actually did all of those things on my list. Um, what's next? You know, that's kind of the mindset because you're still in motion. 
you're still ready for the next thing to come and you're excited about it because you know that what you put in and the focus and the planning has come to fruition in front of your eyes. The second tip is all about making changes to your lifestyle, to habits that are maybe not serving you. The habit that was not serving me before I started my journey to a more successful and more balanced life was going out, drinking, and being hungover. Uh, I definitely, definitely got that out of my system in like high school and college, but I'm telling you, I was so unmotivated and by the time I got to college, I, you know, I had coasted through high school to be honest. And by the time I got to high school, I, I mean, sorry, college, I wasn't taking anything seriously. I'm like, I can like lay at the beach and then go out and not go to class and no one will say anything about it because I'm in college, I'm away from home. And I totally was blowing my opportunity. So I ended up with a 1.8 GPA. I almost dropped out of college. um, And I actually almost dropped out and got my real estate license. But I'm really, really happy that I didn't. And the biggest thing that got me back on track was cutting, partying, and alcohol out of my life. Um, Not, you know, entirely. Of course, I would socially, you know, have a drink here and there and go out maybe like once or twice a month. But it was not my priority to go out with my friends anymore, which for me, I'm a very, very much a social butterfly. I love to be with my friends. It was definitely my priority at that time to hang out with my friends all the time. And I really believe that that was the most important thing in my life. I always had a job. I always worked. But you cannot, I mean, and some people can, but I could not work at the 120% that was required of me to get my GPA back up, to get a steady job, to get internships, if I was going to be drinking and be hung over the next day. It just was not possible and not feasible for me. So I made that decision and I remember making it and really actively sticking to that from that day on because I said I have an opportunity to go to college I can go get my real estate license whenever I want I cannot go to college whenever I want I do not I'm not going to have this opportunity forever and I'm not going to be this young forever there are things and responsibilities that come up in your life so whenever somebody reaches out to me and they say hey should I drop out of college to get my real estate license I immediately say no because Genuinely, I think college is an incredible opportunity, and a lot of people don't agree with that. But I, there are never, there's so many times in my career now that I look back and say, I'm so glad I learned that in school. I'm so glad I learned that during my time in school. Um, And the biggest thing that I learned was taking that 1.8 GPA to graduating with magna cum laude, which I didn't even know what that was at graduation, but. It took a lot of hard work and a lot of discipline, but how satisfying was that for me? Like, I have chills right now thinking about it because it was something that I completely thought was out of my reach. I thought I had completely blown my opportunity, and I turned it around. So the way that I did that 100% was cutting that out of, out of my life. If I was still partying, there's no way that I would be able to achieve that. Um Again, there are some people that are totally fine with socializing and they go to work the next day and they're and they're great. But to this day, I'm not going to be showing up to an open house hungover. I am always thinking of like being at my 120% when it comes to being with my clients and doing my work and I'm a happier person because of it. Um, I just wanted to add that tip because I think it could help a lot of people that Maybe you're prioritizing not so much the drinking side of things, but being with your friends all the time and giving all of your energy to that because in reality, this is real life. You have to, you know, grow up and make money and support yourself and especially a lot of people that listen to my podcast are women and let's get realistic. Like, it's 2022. It's going to be less and less common for 
you know, men to be the providers, in my opinion, it could go the other way. I mean, a lot of people like traditional gender roles, but that's not the case for everyone. And to think that that's just going to happen because you want it to happen is a little bit, um, you know, it's not going to happen for everybody. And you're going to be disappointed if you didn't set yourself up, you know, in the right way to be independent if you need to be. And then if you meet a partner that wants traditional gender roles, that's amazing. Like that's your, that's your life that you want to live. But I do think it's important just for your own confidence to add some of these, you know, structures into your life that are going to set you up for success in the future. Okay. So a lot of people ask me, what time do you wake up in the morning? Now this morning I woke up at around five in the morning, but that is because I'm pregnant currently. I have hyperemesis, which means that I throw up multiple times a day. And usually it's like first thing in the morning at five, five 30 in the morning. Um, however, on a normal time, I usually wake up more about like seven o'clock in the morning. Um, but it's going to be again, different for everybody's schedule. And I want to talk about waking up early versus letting yourself recharge because this is something that I am always trying to balance and it's really, really important to first and foremost, listen to your body, listen to your mind. Are you exhausted? Should, is it better for you to work out this morning or is it better for you to sleep in and to get really comfortable with that conversation with yourself so that you're not left feeling guilty that you didn't work out five days this week and you didn't, you know, reach that number. If, if you are working out five days a week, but your mental health is struggling because you're only getting five hours of sleep a night, that's a recipe for disaster. In my opinion, um, you need to prioritize sleep. Sleep is so important. I know that if I do not have enough sleep and I go into the workday, it's not going to be, my mind is not in the right place. It's harder to make decisions. It's harder to make decisions that are not emotional because definitely I know we've all been there of having lack of sleep, especially moms. Um, You can definitely get super emotional and a little bit (laughs) irrational about your reactions to things. So especially if you're a woman trying to go into business, uh, you need to make sure that This is in check because every single person, the number one thing that I don't want another male or counterpart to give me criticism on is that I'm emotional or is that I'm emotional in a deal or that I'm bringing my emotions into something. And again, I am pregnant, so I'm not super woman. Like I have emotions and I, and I cry, you know, on my own time in my car or whatever, (laughs) but it's really, really important to get your sleep and get your rest first and foremost, um, in order to make, to make really strong and decisive decisions, because I really want to talk later in this episode about trusting yourself, because that is something that brings me a lot of confidence. It's a day to day thing that I work on, but trusting yourself and trusting your decision making is so important in growing your confidence and in growing your business. So back to waking up early. I do think waking up early, now that I wake up at like 5, 5.30 in the morning, I just, you know, puke and then I go to the gym, but I do feel happier than puking and just laying there, you know, and being like, oh, I'm tired, you know, whatever. I'll just go to bed earlier, wake up earlier, and I do like that schedule for myself. I also like to work out in the morning knowing myself I'm not going to do it later on in the day. Um, I like to get things done that I need to get done in the morning. So in the afternoon, I can kind of like, you know, in the afternoon, then I can feel like I was productive during the first half of the day and I can get my other items done. So that brings me to productivity hack number four, which is map out a plan that works for you, that works specifically for you. Um, So I rarely use the exact tips that I learn from listening to podcasts, from, you know, talking to clients, uh, from, you know, I'm always listening and learning from people. It brings me a lot of joy to 
talk to people, learn from them, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. It's very, very enriching experience. And if you're talking to people and showing interest in them, they will share a lot of things that you can utilize in your day-to-day life, and they're happy to share them with you. However, again, take what, <laughs> what works and leave what doesn't. You don't have to take every single piece of advice as law because at the end of the day, we're all humans. And when you're listening to these podcasts of so successful people and hearing their stories and all of those things, they figured those things out because it worked for them. And that's why it was sustainable. And that's why it worked because it's customized for them and their lives and their goals. You don't have the same exact goal as Big Sean talking to Jay Shetty on On Purpose podcast, which is one of my favorite podcasts. But his method and listening to him is super inspiring because he's very successful and he's very spiritual and that resonates with me, but I'm not going to then go, oh, I'm going to live exactly the way Big Sean lives or I'm going to live exactly the way, you know, another very successful person like Barbara Corcoran, like I'm going to listen to her advice, but I'm not going to then embody her lifestyle. Okay. So take what works. Same thing with Ed Milet. He gave a tip that I actually used exactly like to a T. And he said the least productive time of the week are is Fridays from 1 to 5 p.m. So what I did was I wrote in my calendar from 1 to 5 p.m. on a recurring schedule that that was the time when I was going to work the hardest. So at the end of the week, I would work, sit in my office from one to five, get all the things done, like the, you know, admin tasks, like bills, like menial tasks that I don't want to do, but I have to do, um, and get that stuff done from one to five. I cannot tell you how much that alone got me out of a rut because I was in a rut when I heard that episode and then I implemented that into my week and it totally, totally changed the trajectory of the rest of my week. However, that's a very specific circumstance. Typically, I just listen and then I use the kind of ideas to make it work for me. Learn the concept and then make it work into your ideal lifestyle. And when we talk about ideal lifestyle, draw that out for yourself. Draw out the life that you want to live. Don't make your schedule for the person that you are now. Make your schedule for the person that you want to be. Uh, Who do you aspire to be? Like, I wanted to be very, very successful. So I listened to a lot of successful people and 90% of them said, oh, I wake up at seven o'clock in the morning. Oh, I wake up at six o'clock in the morning. Like I'm already up. My stuff is done by the time the rest of the world wakes up basically. And that's a pretty common thread. So you can say with confidence, okay, that's a mark of a lot of successful people. Maybe I'll implement that into my life where I don't need to wake up at five in the morning, but maybe I'll wake up at 6.30 or maybe I'll wake up at seven and then I'll start journaling. And maybe instead of journaling for 20 minutes, like this person said, I'll journal for five minutes because that's what works for my schedule. So again, make it work for your life. The fifth productivity hack that I have is to always check yourself for entitlement. There are so many options out there right now as far as how to make money, and it can be really easy for people to gain a feeling of entitlement when they have all of these other options at their fingertips. This could leave you trying and failing at multiple different ventures if you're not clear on what you want. And the entitlement side of things can get in the way because you might think that you are owed things that you want when in reality, the people that have the things that you want have worked for the things that they have. Yes, some people are given more things than others. That is a fact of life. It's a fact of life. That's all that is. And if you're looking at somebody else's life as they were handed that, they only have that because of blank. If I had what they had, I would achieve that. You are not going to be successful. I hate to be so straightforward about it, but I have never met someone who's successful that has said any of those things. I remember when I first 
open my brokerage, someone said to me, and that was, you know, eight months ago. It was actually longer before this. I think this was about a year and a half ago that someone said this to me. And they said, oh, how long have you been in the business? I told them. And they said, oh, if I had started when you started, I would be in the same position as you right now. And that person's a realtor. And since that day has not closed one deal. So just understand that the people that you're looking up to that have what you want, most of the time, even if they have family money or they have had help or all of these things, they still have to put the work in to make it happen. Here's an example. My husband inherited his law business. Um, He inherited it from his dad and passed it off to him when he retired. Now, a lot of people could say, oh my God, well, if I had a law business given to me, then I would be successful too. This man works his ass off. He has so much stress. He has to manage employees. He has to manage all of the business that was there before and generate new business because you don't just keep all of the business that's given to you. You have to maintain it. And he works there nine to five and it's a real job and it's a real grind. So I, and me alternatively, I open my business on my own. It's definitely a grind because I sometimes am like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> like, I have no blueprint, you know, to really go off of. But it's a different set of struggles than what, what he has. And that's all that is. It's a different set of struggles. Never in my life do I look at my husband and say, he has it so much easier than I do. That's not the case. You're given things in your life. When life gives you lemons, it's what you make of it. Um, so again... I'm going to bring this back to entitlement. There are a lot of people that my husband and I have hired in the past year um, separately or together for our own businesses where people are, you know, maybe in their early, early 20s, like just graduated college. And within a month, and I'm not talking one person, this is like three different people. Within a month, they have come up with an action plan for how they should get paid more They already want to raise after a month and there's more work and effort going into the action plan to show us that they should make more money than into the work day-to-day itself. If you're not willing to do the day-to-day work that you promoted yourself as and that you're hired for or that when you start your own business, if you're going to complain about the actual grind and day-to-day work, you're that's that comes from entitlement because you're saying what you're saying is I deserve the results without putting in the effort. I deserve to make a hundred thousand dollars a year, but I don't want to show you how I'm going to do that until you pay me the hundred thousand dollars a year. That in itself is entitlement, and that's going to set you back, 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 back because a you're not going to keep that job. Or B, you're not going to be able to start a business with that mindset because you have to work with people on a day-to-day basis to start a business. You have to be really good with interpersonal skills. You have to be able to show a little bit of elbow, elbow grease before you get what you want. It's like when I tell my girls at the brokerage, when I get a listing, it's not because I walked in the door with my listing agreement and said, here you go, sign it because it's me. I might have to call somebody on average five to seven times before I get a listing. Whether it's calling them, whether it's meeting with them in person, whether it's showing them some kind of value where I'm going to do an open house for them before they even sign a listing agreement, or I'm going to post about it, or I'm going to do this, that, and the other thing and talk to my buyers first. Like, There's a whole multitude of things that I do before I ever even have a commitment from a buyer or seller because I want to earn their business. I don't want to be known as the lazy realtor that made 20 grand off a sale by signing some paperwork. That's not what I want to be known for. I want people to be like, wow, that was really worth working with an agent like her 
and I want to do that again, and I want to use her again because she puts in the work. So keep that in mind. Entitlement is rampant, (laughs) and if you can combat that and constantly check in with yourself and say, "Am am I speaking from a place of entitlement, or am I speaking from a place of reality? Did I actually put the work in to gain the result that I'm looking for, or do I just think that I deserve that simply because? My sixth productivity hack is a quick one, but it's take care of yourself like you would a baby. This is something that I definitely struggle with. I can be pretty hard on myself, but even last night, I was writing some notes in my notepad, and I was trying to prepare something for the following day, and I just said, would I let my own child at 11 o'clock at night be furiously working on things and on my phone or scrolling through social media, no, I would not. So I immediately, once I said to myself, take care of yourself like a baby, just keep that little mantra in your head because you need to take care of yourself, your mind, your body, how you feel, how you look. Again, a lot of my listeners are women. I feel so much better and more confident when I have taken care of myself. Sometimes I find myself burning myself out and depleting myself by giving all of my energy away and not leaving anything for myself. And while you're doing that, you can feel like I'm doing the right thing. I'm giving, I'm helping, I'm helping. And then everybody else around you, you know, again, like I I manage 27 agents and 25 of them are women. So When I'm like, okay, well, everybody else has a manicure, their hair done, their eyelashes done, and they look super like, you know, put together and healthy. Meanwhile, I look like a sewer rat. That's a problem. Like, I need to take care of myself. And there's no one to blame but me for not prioritizing my own self-care, my own mental health, and my own balance. So remember to take care of yourself like a little baby. My seventh tip is keep track of the content you're consuming. I genuinely cannot remember where I read this, but someone said or said it that they look back at like the past 30, 60, 90 days of what they've been consuming. And as soon as I heard that, I said, okay, I'm going to get into audiobooks. I've never been a big reader at all. I've probably read cover to cover two, three books in my life. I will start them and then I don't really finish. Um, audiobooks really do resonate with me better than me reading a physical copy. Uh, again, that is a personal preference. Some people really, really retain when they read. I retain when I listen to things. So I know that if I'm listening to audiobooks, you know, three times a week for a month, my headspace and my brain is going to be so much happier than it would be if I was just listening to like, heavy, you know, I, I love, I love rap music. Like when I'm listening to it on the way to showings, it hypes me up. It keeps me energized during work hours. Like it is my happy place. However, I do know that I need to add audiobooks into that regimen. I need to add some music that's a little bit more calming sometimes, um, for more of like a meditative state. I don't always listen to like guided meditations. I do probably four times a week. But the other days, I'll say to myself, okay, this like Jack Johnson song is going to be my form of meditation today while I'm getting ready. Make Again, making it work for you. When you think, okay, yeah, I have to meditate every day to keep my mind on track, sometimes that means meditating while you're doing something else because you just simply don't have time to set aside for it. And then again, that's a sustainable part of your life. So keep track of what you're consuming. Same thing with listen, like watching the news. During the lockdown, I was, you know, one of those people that was always watching the news, always looking at, you know, the toll count and all these things. And I was so paranoid. I was so afraid of people. Like I have never been so afraid of other people in my life. And it was a really scary place to be in and a really cynical place to be in. So I made a decision to just completely stop watching the news and I have never felt better. 
I make my own decisions based on facts and, you know, the evidence that I see instead of one side or the other. And I would really highly recommend that um, to anybody that feels like, you know, I can be impressionable. Everybody can be impressionable. We all need to practice critical thinking and thinking for ourselves because, again, when you're making your own decisions, when you're trusting your own judgment and you're not making decisions based on other people's opinions, that's when you gain a lot of confidence in a lot of ways. Also, make sure you give your time to free, like think freely. Think freely for yourself, for you, for what resonates and works with you and what makes sense to you. The next tip is to practice self-awareness in order to consistently and actively check in with yourself as you see fit and tweak it as you see fit. If you see things in your schedule that you've created that do not work, but you are like, I need to commit to this because I wrote it down, make those edits. Allow yourself to make those edits. That's why I say I don't really make New Year's resolutions because I'm just consistently every you know week couple weeks month whatever makes sense for me is when I'm reevaluating my goals and I'm saying you know what this was my goal earlier this year but now I don't really think it's as important to me let me move this to the top of my list an example would be for the past you know four or five years Every goal that I've had is primarily a monetary goal where it's like, I want to make this amount of money. I want to close this amount of homes. I want to help this amount of people. It's like more career focused and more income focused. And that has worked very well for me. Everything I write down as far as a goal of how much I want to close or how much I want to make, I achieve it or more. So that is a, there, it's a scientific fact that 42 per, you have a 42% higher chance of achieving your goals if you write them down. However, t- less than 20% of people actually write them down consistently enough and with enough clarity to actually achieve them. So you're shooting yourself in, your, in the foot if you're not at least just writing it down and you don't have to buy a manifestation journal You don't have to, like, go get a vision board. I've done a vision board before. It's definitely super helpful, definitely works. But at the end of the day, simplicity is key, especially when we're talking about being productive. There is nothing that sets you back more than paying too much attention to the details that you don't even put out what you set to put out. An example would be uh, postcards. So, like, mail or postcards for real estate. I am not going to take five hours out of my day to make the most perfect, most detailed, most beautiful with the best font postcard. Because guess what? At the end of the day, 99% of the people are probably going to throw them out. So put the important information on, make it look presentable, and send it out. Get it done in an hour so then you can get other things done. It should not take you that long to get these things done. Also, the best tip that I got from my first uh, pharmaceutical sales job, I had done a couple internships in college, which luckily landed me a full-time job as a pharmaceutical rep in my last semester of college. And I remember I had been hired, you know, like a week and a half prior to this call. And the CEO called me and he said, hey, how are things going? And I'm like, yeah, I'm just waiting for the marketing materials, you know, just waiting for those to come in the mail and then I can start prospecting. And he's like, that's not an excuse. You have your business cards. That's all you need to generate business. And I, he was absolutely right. Like there was no point of me waiting a week and a half or two weeks or longer to get these marketing materials when in reality it is your person, yourself, and your business card just so that people can contact you, that is legitimately all you need. And to this day, I follow that same, same sentiment. I have never been one to like go crazy with print marketing and and all these crazy things and, you know, like going so far into the details that, that I'm not producing enough. Just put it together, get out there, 
and get the things done that you need to get done with as little as you need. In my opinion, that makes it very sustainable because if I had the mindset of, oh, I need the perfect postcard in order to talk to somebody, if I see somebody I want to talk to, what am I going to do? Go run to Kinko's because I ran out of postcards? No, like I just go and talk to the person. If need be, I'm going to put their phone number in my phone, even better than I have their contact. So let yourself as a person be more valuable than the marketing materials themselves. I'm being really specific here, but you know what I mean? When you're working on yourself as a person over the tools that you think you need, like an example would be electronics and apps, all these apps. I go into a smoothie place and I'm like, hey, can I see your menu? Oh no, you have to download the app. Why would I need to do that? To me, that's driving business away. Make it simple for people. Make it simple for yourself. Make it simple. Keep it simple, stupid. That's what my mom always used to say to me, and it really is true. Um, But again, back to the point, you want to trust yourself, but also listen to those around you when they show concern, when you feel like you're getting kind of feedback that's all kind of similar. And again, like there's a resonating message of, you know, listen to yourself only and don't take others' opinions and who cares, which I pretty much live by. However, if you do feel like family members are saying something to you that you need to slow down or you need to, you know, you're going to burn out, those kind of things, take that with a grain of salt, listen to it, and understand that these people are looking out for you nine times out of ten and you can tweak things in the way that works for you without totally giving up on your dreams. It's better that you slow down a bit and then ramp back up than, you know, burn yourself out and then you are not going to achieve any of your goals because you'll be sleeping in bed. I want to start this ninth hack with a quote from Drake and it is, everything is going as right as it can. And This is a quote from my favorite song, uh, one of my favorite songs that he sings, and it makes me feel really calm to hear it because everything is going as right as it can go. Like, everything's going as well as it can go. No matter how much success I have earned um, and, you know, how much confidence that gives me and all those great things... Everything comes with stress. Everything comes with something that could be a negative or could be perceived as a negative. It is all how you look at things. Every single thing. It does not matter. I'm telling you, I've had negative in my bank account and I am now a millionaire. So I understand that no matter how much money you have, it is your mindset first that is going to dictate how happy you are. My goals now are all about me being happy, peace of mind, time with my son, and creating boundaries in my life. I have never been one to set boundaries. It's been very difficult for me to do that, whether it's with family, whether it's with friends, whether it's with my business primarily. Um, It is a huge struggle for me. And sometimes it can feel like people are depleting me of my energy. When in reality, I am giving them the ability to do that. So when you say everything is going as right as it can, like everything is working in your favor. Just believe that the universe is working in your favor. It's the way that you see it. It's your perspective of the situation. Of course, there are things in life that are totally totally bad and unfortunate like deaths in your family or deaths in your friends and you know there are tragedies that happen of course but if you're getting really caught up in stress it can feel like the smallest thing is a tragedy to you like you can start to have the reaction that these small little things that in the scheme of things are not going to mean anything they can take over your life so listen to music and listen to mantras and things that that really resonate with you and keep you calm write them down save them to a playlist i am all about 
music and because I work out of my car a lot, my mini breaks throughout the day are driving around listening to music that makes me feel really good, really empowered and kind of have those messages in it that make you rethink your perspective and check yourself. Always check yourself. The tenth and final tip is actually a combo of things. I want to show you how I get myself out of a rut. These are tips that I've used in the past to get myself out of ruts, um, out of depression, out of, you know, being not in motion and wanting to be in motion um, and getting myself to a happier place. So the number one thing, especially in real estate, Um, You do not have a routine, like there's no nine to five, so you kind of just have a lot of idle time. Number one thing is a routine. I am the kind of person, I thrive off of a routine. I didn't think that back in the day. I was much more of like a free spirit, hippie kind of person. I didn't want that structure. I didn't want any routine because I felt like that was controlling me. Um, And I am very much like, I am... It, I have adverse <laughs> reactions to any type of control. So it was difficult for me to understand that a routine was actually going to help me with my anxiety and make me feel more at peace. A routine can really, really keep you at peace because the idea behind it is you know what your day is going to hold. You know what something is set up for you. And now I get excited about my routine. Like I get excited about waking up and going to the gym I get excited about the calls that I'm going to have in the morning because I already know that they're going to happen and they're not unexpected um, and it doesn't feel as overwhelming when you do have a structure set up. Um, Another thing is within your routine, a to-do list is so important. When I'm feeling overwhelmed, my husband is always very straightforward with me about this. He's like, if you're sitting here complaining about the work you have to get done just go do the work. And when you are feeling overwhelmed, sometimes this is like the most annoying thing to hear because you're like, well, I just want you to tell me to take a nap, you know, (laughs) like, but in reality, if I go to try to take a nap, I'm not going to nap. I'm going to be stressing over the things that I have to get done still. So that is, I'm telling you the most simple, but like best tip that you should take from this is when you're feeling like drained, And like, you're like, I'm so overwhelmed and so stressed by all the things you have to do. I have seen it in other people where they're not actually being productive, but they're so overwhelmed by the things that they have to do that they feel like they're doing all of these things where you feel like you're working 24 seven when in reality, your production is terrible. Um, Again, going back to the definition of productivity It's about the result. It is not about the hours put in. And this is going to be so real for so many people that are starting their own businesses, that are going into jobs that are not nine to five, that are, it's results based. And even if you are in a job that's nine to five, if you're trying to get a raise and you want to earn that raise and earn your way to work up through a company, focus on the results. Do not focus on the amount of hours that you're clocking in, because I'm telling you, a CEO is not going to care that you put in X amount of hours. They're going to be like, well, what are the results? It's the same thing with, with real estate and with my agents. Okay. You worked every weekend, but do you have anything under contract? Do you have any deals done? Like, did you find a, a property for your client? Did you get creative and go off market to find them something that wasn't available? Did you do this, this, and this and exhaust your options to get to that result? If not, you just wasted your time at the end of the day. And that's just reality. Is that is that tough love? Maybe to some people, but it's reality. And I'm not going to sugarcoat everything. <laughs> like The results are what you're looking for, whether it's financially, whether it's results with spending more time with your kids. That's quality time. I know one of my biggest goals is always to have the time with my son be extremely quality where we're not where I'm not on the phone with clients the whole time and I'm actually focused on him so that I feel like okay I'm not with him as a stay-at-home mom all day long but when I am with him 
It's very quality. We're very focused on each other. And that's the result that I'm looking for. The result of that would be a better connection with my son and not just spending idle time together, but distracted. So always think of the result in mind. Uh, The second thing about getting out of a rut is working out. Working out is always like the best default thing that I do. I have always been really consistent about working out since I was, you know, an early teenager. And it has been the thing that has kept my mind right. Like the last thing, you know, I used to have a lot of struggles because I modeled for 10 years where it was all about what my body looked like. And I was always getting ready for something like some kind of shoot. And I had like a timeline of when I, my body needed to look a certain way. So I had this really unhealthy relationship with my body never being what I wanted it to be. It could always be better. It could always be tweaked. And no matter how much I worked out and I look back at pictures where I'm like, oh my God, like, you know, how did I not appreciate that time of what, of when, you know, I had like the body of my dreams, whatever. I was so unhappy because I was so focused on what I lacked. Whereas when you work out for your mind and you work out for the way that it makes you feel and look at it as like a therapeutic, it's free therapy. It is super effective and it's tried and true and take that as a blessing and just say, you know what? I can't believe that I can even run today. Like that I have legs and I'm able to walk. Like that I am so lucky to be able to provide this to myself, uh, which is your health. Um, The third thing is to document things. This is, you know, not going to be for everybody, but I will say that when I first started on TikTok, I was definitely in a rut. I was in that like, you know, lockdown rut that a lot of us went through. And what I did was I, you know, I had been posting really heavily on Instagram, but it was kind of more like branded content and curated content, which I haven't done a brand deal in like over a year because I just it didn't feel authentic to me. But anyway, when I started TikTok, it was really just like vlogging videos of what I was doing and like my daily routine, but it got me into a routine. So, you know, blogging, what you're having for coffee, uh, where, when you're working out, oh, when you're working, blah, blah, blah. Some people might see that as, oh, why do you have to document everything? Or are you showing off? No, it's honestly like a to-do list for me where then I can look back at the end of the day and say, oh, I was productive today. Like, oh, I did get a lot of stuff done today that I feel good about. Um, That to me is my like visual checklist of things that I'm getting done where I can lay down at the end of the night and say, I was productive today. I can go to sleep and feel happy. That's what I need in my life. I'm definitely a person that needs to be productive to in order to feel happy. I know that about myself. So that definitely helps me to vlog things and document it. Um, Again, remember, I'm going to close it out with this. Remember to tailor your new routine in a way that suits your ideal lifestyle. Really, I want you guys after this episode to go grab a notebook, grab a piece of paper if you don't have a notebook, keep it simple. But write down what you want your life to look like. What do you want to be? What do you want in your career? What do you want in your home life? Just draw it all out. And what does it mean for you? Could it be more travel? Could it be more money? Could it be more time with your kids? Or could it just surely be the feeling that you get when you achieve a goal that you clearly set out for yourself? That is going to be the most helpful tip to get your confidence back and to gain your confidence. I did not have a lot of confidence in my life starting out and it has been a journey. And the biggest thing that gives me confidence is keeping promises to myself, achieving things that I write down physically and looking back and saying, I really can do anything and you guys can do anything. So please take these tips with you. I hope that they helped. And if you love this episode, please rate it on Spotify or Apple Podcasts and share it with your friends. Share it on Instagram. I would love it if you would tag me at Mari Juliet, M-A-R-I-J-U-L-I-E-T-T-E. That's on all platforms. 
Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and here on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening. Thank you for listening. Have an amazing day.